So initially my plan was to make a woods loot guide, but then realized there was endless amounts of these guides already. And they're all pretty similar, so I thought recycling the endless sea of identical cookie cutter guides would be kind of pointless. This is also when I realized that all these guides are all done in an offline raid, which while convenient for showing various loot spawns, it neglects a critical part of the game, surviving and successfully extracting with the loot. All the loot you pick up in raid doesn't mean anything without a successful exfil. Unrealized realized gains anyone? Anyways, instead of making a loot guide myself, which would have been pretty much the same as all the others, I decided to try something slightly different. I'd follow a fairly typical loot path I take on woods, but on a live raid. So join me as I journey through woods following the loot guide of many others. Alright, to woods we go. My first spawn was at outskirts, which is the most ideal spawn for this run, as it has more potential extracts. This raid I pretty much do the entire loot path, so for this one I'll have a minimap on the left that you can follow along. If you want a more detailed guide for woods, there are plenty of good videos that go in-depth showing the various different spawns. I'm a little biased, but Tulu has a good one covering a bit more of the area than what I hit up. With the outskirts spawn, I'll always do the attachment cabin. You can often find high tier ammo on these boxes. Then inside the cabin on the table, you'll find meta suppressors, grips, and other things like NVGs. People usually loot this on the way out, so later parts of the raid will usually be looted. But if you spawn close, there's no reason not to check. The first major POI for loot is USAC camp. Considering that this is often a contested area, it wasn't surprising to run into other people. Yeah, I just saw two. Yeah, I just saw two, man. I think he's seen me. One down. Where's your friend? Good night. Now it might seem that I was playing very passive here, which I was, but we need to consider three factors in this engagement. Situational awareness, numbers advantage, and weapon of engagement. As you saw, they didn't really know where I was, whereas I did. With greater situational awareness, I currently hold the advantage. Furthermore, if I decide to push up, they'll have a better angle looking down from high ground. Secondly, they have numbers advantage. I saw two, but it actually ended up being three. Paired with the gun that I'm using, pushing them will put me at a significant disadvantage, as I only have 20 rounder mag and a gun that only shoots in semi-automatic. Thus, keeping a distance and trying to land well-placed shots is way safer. It also gives me a chance to fully disengage if I feel the need to. Once you get into USAC camp, there are rare item spawns next to the sleeping bags, weapon attachments and ration spawns on the table for potential moonshine.
In this tent here, there's a valuable spawn next to the bed and crates both inside and around the tent. On this half of USAC camp, check the med table for early level quest items like Saliwas, and if you're lucky, maybe you'll come across a lead axe. There are crates scattered around the area and more weapon attachments on the table. If you have an empty bag, just grab whatever attachment there is and sell it to Peacekeeper for a little extra dollar. Someone been through this part? I think there's just no loot, that's all. Once I finish looting USAC camp, I'll head towards the radio tower. Go head towards the radio tower. When you get there, you want to head down into the bunkers and check the beds for rare item spawns. I found multiple bitcoins on the bed. Make sure you do walk over it because you won't be able to see it. And check under the bed next to the door for more valuable spawns. Once you finish looting the bunker, head across to the bridge overlook. There are ration spawns on the table for a chance to find moonshine. You also want to check inside the cabin. Under the bed is there are rare item spawns there as well. More places I found Bitcoin on this map. I'll then head towards Sunken Village. This is where majority of the valuable spawns are on this map. The first cabin you go inside and there's a rare item spawn on, on the bench on the left. Inside this box the sleeping bag next to this barrel and on the sleeping bag here then there's some decent ammo like 545 BP inside these wooden crates as well check this table here for a moonshine I found a couple here but if not it'll just be food items the next building over, there are rare item spawns between the bushes on the middle, this corner here, and the opposite corner.
There are two spawns on the boat where I found things like Bitcoin, GP coins, and Veritas picks. I'll then head over to the sunken church. To get in and out, just crouch and look down. There are valuable spawns around the corner and on top of the boxes. Things like badges and proker will blend in, so check for that little dot. This little boat also has two valuable spawns on the side, so look out for that. In this building here, valuable spawns inside this bush, and there's usually a cache. Then when you come over to this building, there's med spawns in the bucket, ration spawns next to the fireplace, a duffel bag, and rare item spawns on either corner of the tent. I forgot to loot the building I'm running past, but check on the bed for ammo and rare item spawns. In this hut here, check under the beds for rare item spawns and under this table here. If not, there'll be ration spawns around for things like sugar, whiskey and vodka. Now we're going to head over to Scab Village. In this building, there'll be food spawns on the table and potential rare item spawns on and underneath the bed. One's come through here and already probably swept everything up. We then make our way across to this house. Check the tables for sugar and moonshine. Check this box here as you can find stuff like GPUs and rare item spawns underneath this bed. Make your way upstairs and there'll be a rare item spawn on the corner of this bed and next to this table.
you can check in this garage for tools like red pliers or ball vexes, then go inside and there'll be more rations spawned on the table. The amount of sugars you can find on this part of the map alone can net you around half a million rubles. Another sugar? Oh, there's another sugar. Okay, I really need to go now. On the way out, I'll hit the old sawmill. It's nothing crazy, but a couple weapon crates and other crates for if you have any slots open. That's pretty much the woods loot path that I'll usually take. Again, if you want a more in-depth guide on these, there are heaps of videos already covering the different spawns following this path. Now, with the guide part out of the way, let's continue on our journey. After emptying my bag, I headed back towards Yusek camp to see if anything else was there. Oh my god, we just found a Ledex. Even though the Ledex was a pretty big find, there wasn't too much else at Yusek camp, so I turned around and headed towards the radio tower. On the beds and below. Oh. If someone takes a car, it's going to be a pain in the ass to get out. Been like no valuables in here lately. Can I mental this? I don't think so. While looting Seattle Village, I heard a rumble of an engine, and not too long after, I saw a BTR come to a stop. This is huge. My recording stopped because I ran out of space. I saw the opportunity present itself and I quickly gave my Ledex to the driver so he can safely drop it off to me later. This also meant if I died, the Ledex will still be safe. Um, take my Ledex. Ask, should I send them? Send them this vodka. Oh, I can't. Okay, we can send just the Ledex. 70k to send the Ledex is kind of worth. Now, do I have enough money to get out with a car? I do not. With the Ledex safely being delivered, I decided to head towards Sniper Rock instead of Scab Town for a change of scenery, but also my extract was towards outskirts. In that case, we're gonna skip village and then just head straight this way so we can make it to outskirts in time. 
Honestly, 70k to drop off a Ledex risk-free is kind of huge. Like a massive profit right there. Yo, the sun's in my eye. Did that kill him? I just whiff. Now he's dead. With the sun starting to set, I was suddenly made aware of the limited time I had before it got really dark. I kinda wanna get out before the sun goes down, so... Dude, what's going on on this side? That's on the way to extract. Holy, look at that. How cool is this? This is really cool, but also really scary. Like, this looks really cool really cool but it's also really scary i don't know man i can't english right now i'm gonna loot attachment hut before i go might as well never mind someone's been here Maybe that's what I was hearing. Actually not that far behind a player, maybe. So red and orange is crazy. With the darkness cloaking the landscape, I grabbed a pair of night vision goggles and ventured back into the woods, aware that many people will avoid raiding in the dark, and I could use this to my advantage. If I go up this way, it's you, sec, right? Give me a lead X. Oh my god, I'm cheating! <laughs> I'm cheating. <laughs> Crimes, that's my second lead X in like a couple days. That's kind of crazy. Oh. Free body armor, boys. Gimme.
I'd set out with the intention of combing a significant portion of woods under the cover of dark. However, with the unexpected discovery of Aletex, combined with the growing weariness of the day, I had a change of heart. Sensing the need for caution as fatigue set in, I made the decision to head back towards the safety of outskirts and get some well-needed rest. Oh, this hasn't been hit. Oh my god, rubles! Rubles. As I lie in bed, I reflect on the day gone by. In the relentless chaos of Tarkov, Woods offers something that other maps do not. A sense of tranquility and peace. While it may not always be a quiet safe haven, skirting along the edge of the map bring only distant echoes of gunfire as potential danger. Yet yeah, one can step back from the violence and chaos, allowing for a genuine appreciation of Tarkov's natural beauty. What seems like a vast forest of nothingness, there are treasures hiding within, waiting to be discovered.